Welcome to the NFPA Link YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering any questions or challenge you have related to electrical and life safety. And we're going to use NFPA Link to do it. The easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards. Today we've been asked to cover the important points of sizing pole and junction boxes with four AWG or larger conductors. Let's get started. First we'll go to direct equipment and then we will go to enclosures and select pull and junction boxes. Sizing pull and junction boxes with four AWG or larger conductors for a straight pull is well straightforward. The height or width depending on the box orientation and the depth of the box will be based on the overall raceway dimensions including space for installation of lock nuts and bushings. Pull and junction boxes come in standard sizes from the manufacturer, which will ultimately dictate the size of the box. For example, the calculated wall space may be 22 and a half inches, but because it's not a standard size from a manufacturer, the box that's chosen is a 24 inch wall space. So we're gonna to go to straight pulls and it's under dot one. Click read more. We're going to go to example one. So according to the 31428A1 of the NEC, the straight pull formula for the length, which would be side B, is eight times the largest raceway. So we're, our raceways are here. We're solving for B. So eight, we have three parallel runs of two inch rigid metal conduit. The raceways are entering in on side A. So eight times two would equal 16 inches. Therefore, the box length or width, depending on the orientation, would need to be a minimum of 16 inches. Side A would be based on the overall raceway dimensions plus room for lock nuts and bushings. So that likely would be eight inches. So you would have a 16 inch long by eight inch tall box. Now occasionally there are mixtures of raceways entering a polar junction box. Keep in mind that when calculating a specific wall using 31428A1 for a straight pole, the largest raceway on the box wall is the only raceway that matters for the calculation. So for our example number two, we have an installation that requires a box that will have two three inch rigid metal raceways and one four inch rigid metal raceway. They are entering on side A, so we're solving for side B. And that would be eight times four, which would be 32 inches. So side B would be 32 inches in length, side A again being based on the dimension of the raceways plus lock nuts and bushings would be six plus four is 10, so likely to be a 12 inch tall box. So you'd probably have a 32 inch by 12. Now, if barriers or separations are installed in any way, then those individual sections are to be considered a separate box within the overall box and all dimensions would need to be calculated to comply with the NEC for each separate space. Now angle and U poles are calculated much differently. Let's go to angle and U, read more. These are more in depth than just the standard straight pole. According to 31428A2 of the NEC, the measurement to the opposite wall is determined by multiplying the trade size of the largest raceway by six. This distance must also be increased for additional raceways by the sum of the diameters of the other raceways, excluding the initial largest raceway already multiplied by six. And it's located in the same row and on the same wall of the box. We're gonna look at example one, part A. So we have conduits entering in or raceways entering in opposite of B. So the installation is that we have one three inch rigid conduit, one two inch rigid conduit, and one one inch rigid conduit all in a row. 
entering on the same wall opposite of side B. So we are going to be solving for side A, what the length is, or height. This will be the formula, six times three equals 18, and then we add the other two raceways, which would be three additional inches, would give us a 21 inch box. So the installation of this box would be currently, the projected side would be 21 inches for side A. So that's our projected. Now we need to calculate for side B which would involve these. And we're gonna to go to example one, part B. And to calculate this, the length dimension, which is side B of the box, the calculation in example one, part A, is going to be used for the conduits entering the wall opposite of side A. And that again would be six times three equals 18 plus two plus one for 21 inches. So currently for side A, and for side B, we have a 21 by 21. We have one more wall to calculate. We have two raceways entering in over here. So I'm gonna go to example one, part C. We have, according to 314.28A2, we would need to multiply the two three inch, one of the two three inch raceways on side A by six. So this formula would be six times three equals 18, plus the three inch is 21. So the wall opposite of A, so that again, B dimension would still be 21 inches. So far, the calculation of our box has been sized at a minimum of 21 inches in height, side A, and 21 inches in length, side B. But there is one additional calculation that needs to be done to confirm the box is properly sized to meet the NEC. The distance between raceways that enclose the same conductor also must be a minimum of six times the size of the largest raceway that contain the same conductors. So we're gonna be looking at C, line C, line D, line E, and line F. And that is an example one, part D. And there we're going to have to verify that these are separated far enough. So, installers, you will need to keep in mind the calculations from this example when laying out how the conduits will penetrate into the box or enter the box to maintain the required distances between conduits. If conduits are not properly laid out, it can increase the size of the box that was previously calculated. When laying out conduits entering the box, so we've got six times one, so six inch, 12, and diagonally 18 inches. So dimension side B, that lengthwise, 21 inches still probably would be okay. Line F, however, may cause us an issue. Six times three equals 18. So this distance right here, line F, has to be 18 inches. Now, in order to get that, we have to take into account the diameters of these raceways, top and bottom. So F would have to have an additional six inches added to it. So we would take, here's the formula, six, times three, so that's the largest raceway, is 18 inches, so that's 18 inches between the raceways, plus three inch, plus three inch, so that's six more inches would equal 24 inches. So you can see by our example for part D line F, the 21 by 21 inch box will not work and you will see that it's three inches too short. So this box would now need to be a minimum of 24 inches on side A and 21 inches minimally on side B. Because this is not a standard size box that manufacturers make, 
A 30 inch by 30 inch box will likely be used for this installation. We hope that answered a lot of your questions about sizing pole and junction boxes with four AWG or larger conductors. Be sure to visit nfpa.org forward slash link and give Link a try if you haven't already. As you just saw, Link is truly a window to productivity.